Hi, uh, everyone. Good uh, evening, uh, good afternoon, and, and good morning uh, to many of you. Um, my name's Simon Darville. I'm IAPB's Director of Communications, Campaigns and Events, uh, and I'm really excited to, to be with you today to talk you through our plans for, for this year's Love Your Eyes campaign and uh, what we're going to be focused on for World Sight Day this year. Um, for those of you who regularly attend our communications and campaigns meetings uh, for members, this is going to be the same presentation that I presented a couple of weeks back. Um, so please feel free uh, to, to stay and, and listen to it again, but I won't be offended if, if you drop off. Um, uh, and what I'll do is I'll kind of go through our plans uh, for this year, um, what we've built, what we've what thinking we've done so far and what we're building um, for World Sight Day uh, this year and how we're going to grow the Love Your Eyes campaign more. Um, I've got uh, quite a few uh, slides to present. Um, and then at the end, uh, please feel free to ask any questions, either in the chat or by putting up your hand, or you can email me as well. And one of my uh, colleagues will uh, put the my email address in uh, in the chat. Um, as I say every time when we meet, thank you all uh, so much for everything you do uh, to help us grow the Love Your Eyes campaign and make World Sight Day bigger and better each year. All of us who are gathered here today have a shared commitment to the gift of sight. Um, as IPB, we know that the work that many of our members do in pro in diagnosis in programs in treatment um support uh, a huge amount of people with eye conditions around the world and that's of the utmost importance um, but we also know with our 2030 insight strategy about the transformative power of awareness and education that's one of our uh, three pillars of our strategy um, and going beyond awareness we want to also drive real change because we all are working towards a world where everyone knows the early signs of eye disease, where the importance of regular sight tests and checkups are as ingrained as dental visits, uh, and where harmful habits fade in favour of protective behaviours. That's the world we are all working towards. Um, and for us, raising awareness is really about four main things. That's what uh, the Love Your Eyes campaign is about. It's about prevention, because knowledge is a shield understanding the risk factors symptoms and healthy practices empower people to prevent uh, conditions before they threaten their sight it's about early detection because many eye diseases are silent in their early stages and awareness campaigns can teach people what to look out for um, about the importance of a regular sight test uh, which we le hope leads to more timely diagnosis there's, a, there's the issue of stigma and uh, the importance of uh, overcoming stigma, having open conversations uh, that combat uh, stigma, allowing those affected to seek support without, uh, without shame. Uh, and finally, empowerment, because informed individuals, informed decision makers and informed politicians can take control of their eye health and the eye health of others. They ask questions, they adopt healthy habits, and importantly, they become true partners with the eye health sector. So awareness is a catalyst. It trans can transform individuals' communities and encourage action. More lives changed, more sight preserved, more human potential unleashed um, by, its pub by, a pub by the public and its leaders um, to truly understand the values of eye health. And we know working together with our members as we've done for a, a number of years that uh, our voices are louder together than they are alone but we can really work together to amplify the message of the importance of eye health around the world and that's what IAPB's over 200 members around the world can do together so this year's love your eyes campaign will continue to educate uh, dispel myths and inspire action um, for some of you, you'll have been here along this uh, journey with us uh, before um, and would have heard me speak many of times. Some of you may be new uh, to IAPB or your organisations, 
So I'll just explain a little bit about what Love Your Eyes is and what we've done over the last three years. I'll talk a little bit about our audiences um, and then talk about the, the activations we've got planned this year. Um, so over three years, we've Love Your Eyes has really transformed from an idea into something a lot bigger. And as I say, some of you were there at the very beginning of that. Um, and so thanks once again for everyone's unwavering support. Because of the work that our members have done with us, uh, we've helped to secure a landmark UN resolution, pushing eye health onto the world stage. We continue our partnership with the World Health Organization uh, and we've championed eye care policies with policymakers, institutions and governments around the world. We use World Sight Day as a catalyst, a, a yearly rallying cry for better eye health. And that in over the last few years has really harness the power of global actions with organizations large and small some of whom have, have joined us today uniting behind our message and spreading awareness far and wide we've harnessed the media um, over the last few years reaching nearly a billion people um, with traditional and social media um, with over 56,000 uh, media, media articles. And that in turn has encouraged more growing public support with a world starting to wake up to the importance of eye health and lending its voice to ours to make a louder crescendo um, uh, on eye health. This year, we're not stopping uh, where we've got to. We want to build on the huge success of Love Your Eyes at Work and we're also going to turn our focus to parents, to, to caregivers um, and schools with a goal to empower the next generation with the knowledge to protect their sight, not just now, but throughout their lives as well. Um, and I know lots of you will have lots of things you're doing. Um, what I'm going to go through, I'm not asking you all to do and get planned tomorrow morning. Uh, after breakfast what we hope we're doing is providing you with different tools with different opportunities different hooks for you to use in your own work um, so please don't feel this is kind of me laying out down a diktat what we're trying to do is encourage and give people the opportunity to do things where possible um, and so just to clarify what we mean when we say love your eyes it's a campaign that kind of has multiple layers, but it's the at its core, it's about two ideas, taking care of your own eye health and advocating for those without access. That's the foundation of what we, we are talking about. Um, many of you heard me say this before, but I think of the bit on an aeroplane when you're told to put your mask on before helping someone else. What we're trying to do is encourage people to think about their own eye health first, and then uh, through that to, to think about those without access. Um, last year, we expanded with Love Your Eyes at Work, uh, which was spurred on by the International Labour Organization report on workplace eye health that targeted both employers and workers, broadening our reach uh, further. And this year, we're going to add this emphasis on protecting children's eyesight engaging parents educators and policymakers um, and what we hope we're doing is growing the campaign strategically branching out to these new audiences uh, both of these audiences uh, are where a huge amount of the, the need is um, and so we're going to continue maintaining focus on this not just world sight day but year round um, to address the challenge that our board set us um, which was a sustained visibility for an eye health campaign beyond just World Sight Day um, itself. Um, and so uh, we have uh, four main audiences for the for the overall campaign, and then we have sub sub audiences uh, within that, which I will will mention. Um, we always think about what we want our audiences to think feel say and do um, and we have that as we go through our audiences um, this year again um, for regular consumers that's kind of a, a large amount of people but a, a really an audience that cares about personal health they may not actively always think about their own eye health though um, so they respond well to kind of practical tips 
And we want to ignite their curiosity about eye health because personal interest is the first step uh, along the road to broader awareness. We have conscious consumers. These are people driven by social issues and a desire to help. They're uh, largely um, often women uh, aged between uh, eight, uh, 25 and uh, 45 and likely to be located in, in high income countries. Um, we hope that World Sight Day provides an opportunity for them to support the cause uh, of global eye health equity. Um, we obviously have politicians, key decision makers at local, national and international levels. We want World Sight Day to really highlight the societal and economic benefits of prioritising eye health, making it easy for them to show support for eye health initiatives. And over the last few years, uh, we've done things uh, with members um, and we know you have taken our message into uh, the kind of corridors of power where uh, politicians and decision makers are. Uh, and we have the site sector. We're all here as part of the site sector and our members, partners and experts uh, do a lot and obviously uh, in this area, but we want to unite the whole sector around a shared vision uh, and also encourage those who may be in the sector that don't get involved in things like World Site Day to get involved as well so that we're all um, singing from the same hymn sheet. We know that wherever uh, we look at different audiences, our messaging has to be tailored to them. And so we always make sure that we have uh, we using social insight um, research that we do every year. We look into language that works uh, for our our audiences um, as well. Um, and it's important to stress that when it comes to language, inclusivity is 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 key. And so we try and make sure our messages resonate with people and are simple to understand. Um, if we look into uh, what we plan then for Love Your Eyes at Work this year, um, we really want to continue shining a message and a spotlight on the vital connection between the workplace uh, and eye health, um, employer well-being and overall productivity. Um, so whether that's reducing workplace risks to ensuring every employee gets the eye care they need um, uh, so that companies benefit, workers benefit that two way, uh, two way street. Um, and this is a real continuation of the work that we've done already. Um, the International Labour Organization policy brief is a is a big kind of uh, 30, 40 page document. There's some really important things in there for us as a sector, for employers, for trade unions. Um, and therefore, we really want to open that up and understand more about it and really take that policy brief a lot further than or we already have, because we know this isn't a one off project just because we did it last year doesn't mean that all of those things have been answered. So we're going to weave uh, these messages into the DNA of the campaign. We're continuing the work with the International Labour Organization. They're going to be rolling out work in a number of their countries they are based in. We're meeting with trade unions and workers, uh, representational bodies uh, to make sure that messaging that we are producing and kits, toolkits we're producing work for those bodies. And that's something that we have not had experience of before, uh, but if you and your organization does work with uh, bodies that represent organized labor, uh, then please let us know. And that's something we can explore um, together. And obviously we want to activate forward thinking businesses. Um, and over the next three years, those of you who've heard me speak about this before know I like uh, big numbers. Uh, and over the next three years, we, uh, are targeting uh, to make a difference to 100 million workers' eye health uh, over the course of the next three years. Um, we're going to build on the foundations that we already have um, and uh, in, try and empower human resources professionals with easy to use tools and a new online training course uh, through LinkedIn Learning, encouraging them to put eye health into into their current wellness programs and workplace safety policies. We obviously, and a number of you work very hard on integrated people-centered eye health, about integrating eye health into uh, other health systems. 
we're using a very similar approach. We know that there are many uh, HR programs talking about wellness and workplace safety. And so we want to make sure that eye health is integrated into those, not a separate thing on the side. So we're going to create a course that gives employers the how to of how to make eye health suitable in their workplace. And over the course of the next whole, whole of the rest of the year, use milestones throughout the year um, to uh, to really uh, take this initiative forward. Uh, further uh, cutting edge research is being developed by the International uh, Centre for Eye Health. Um, There'll be, as I say, new resources, further guidelines to empower businesses to prioritise eye health. And at the end of the year, we have the ultimate goal of launching the first ever Love Your Eyes approved employer scheme, um, a kind of major step forward towards healthier workplaces worldwide. Um, so uh, awarding employers for their commitment to worker eye health. To do this, it'd be great to, to work with our members where you already work with employers uh, to get this right. This is not something we have. We, we want to work and build together with our members and our global partners. So if you have thoughts on how to do this, um, please let us know, because we want to make sure we do this well, which is why I'm not launching it this month. We will get there over the course of the year. Um, so that we're able to reach more people and, and create a real collaborative, transformative uh, program. So I've, I've talked about uh, Love Your Eyes at work, and now I'm going to talk about the next uh, part, which is what we're going to concentrate on for, especially for World Sight Day this year, um, expanding the scope of the Love Your Eyes campaign. We know that at least uh, 450 million children around the world have a sight condition that needs treatment, uh, with 90 million children living with some form of sight loss. And so we believe it's time uh, that children's uh, eye health gets the attention it deserves. And that's why this year World Sight Day will be a celebration of children and hopefully led by children as well to put them at the heart of the conversation, amplifying their voice and giving them the tools to champion eye health, a kind of super powered mission for kids and by kids. It is obviously about tests and treatments, but also about sparking a love for healthy eyes within children that hopefully lasts a lifetime. My daughter is, uh, is five and she's uh, in her first year of primary education here in the UK and they do lots of things on road safety and crossing the road safely and all of those kind of things that you learn as a child and I as she was doing that I was thinking back to those lessons that I had actually in the same school hall that she's now in and thinking about how some of those things you remember throughout your life if we can do that as an eye health community encouraging children about the importance of looking after their eye health and remembering to go and get a sight test all of those things we might be able to teach a lesson really early in life that that lasts people throughout their life and also encourages parents and educators to think about it as well so that's kind of uh what we would we would love to to happen as some of you may have known and you've heard me speak about either if some of you are board members or or at other meetings, um, we've been thinking about doing this for a little while. But when we embarked on naming the child focused element of the Love Your Eyes campaign, we quickly hit a bit of a problem. Words like kids or children, teens, young people, they seem straightforward for me sat here in my spare bedroom in London but they carry really different meanings around the world in different cultures, in different countries. And we realized that a term considered friendly in one place could be off-putting in another because of the way that cultures understand childhood. It's not really universal. So in order to create a truly inclusive campaign, we didn't want to pick one word and run with it. That's why we've made the decision that We'll use a new variation of our logo and we'll introduce a new mascot uh, this year, enabling our brand to be more playful 
um and not just focus on the kind of traditional image of a of a child but but have something that you as our members can take animate create your own use how you wish a gift from us as it were to you and uh, and how we can take that further as i say instead of being focused on one specific word we'll produce as we have done over the last few years materials that are adaptable templates guides and resources tailored to work globally so that each nation and region can personalize them based on the most effective language that works for you um, so that our brand becomes more universal opens more doors to a sense of fun um, and that we hope no one feels excluded uh, from this important campaign some of you will know i used to work in the world of politics where in political campaigning you're very much command and control you're telling people exactly what they need to do and they can't go with it outside of those boundaries in this world i think it's really important for people to go off and make things their own as we've seen many of you do with things like the white glasses and other things to to really take them on and, and change them because I can't think of all the amazing things that you, your organisations can do. Um, and I know some of you on this uh, call have done some some things over the last couple of years that have really made me so happy and smile when I see videos or interesting things coming through. So we really want to make sure we're producing things that work for, for our members. Um, this year, we'll continue with a number of activations that you've seen before. Um, we'll be doing our pledges um, with an ambitious mission of screening a million children around the world, um, un those under 18, to spread that awareness about protecting uh, young eyes. Uh, so we're relevant and we realise some of you don't do child eye health, which is why we've got everything else I've talked about previously, but we're relevant. Uh, We'll ask members as well as government schools and parents around the world to pledge uh, to contribute to those essential screenings, those site tests, those exams, uh, whichever language uh, you use to, to describe uh, that part of the eye health journey. Um, not just limited to schools. Uh, if you think and it works for you, there's youth groups, uh, other community settings to try and reach as many uh, young people as possible. We'll produce some comprehensive guides and those of you who work on our IEPB Child Eye Health work group will know there's some new guidelines coming out from that group. So we'll be sharing those in the coming month or so um, and really have everything to help people understand about the importance of regular eye tests. Um, we really want to do this as a kind of movement for children's eye health. And we we really think the best way of doing that is putting children in the driving seat, not just about adults talking down to children, but about them leading uh, the way where suitable and where that works uh, in your uh, country or region. Um, and so we'll be working with our partners to, to find voices of young people and the perspectives of young people in order to build the trust and ensure our message resonates uh, with our key audiences. Um, many of you already do school screenings as a big part of your work, and we'll be producing some further kind of tools and resources for you to use when you've got long queues or or different things going on to help uh, teach uh, people and ch uh, children about the importance of their own eye health and regular uh, tests. We will also, in a number of key um, uh, key target locations, uh, be zeroing on the crucial audience of parents and caregivers to make sure that eye health is a top priority to them. We've got some new cutting edge research going on that we're going to be uh, doing and we'll be releasing in the lead up to World Sight Day um, to really make sure that there are clear, actionable insights through targeted messaging, um, reaching parents through trusted influencers. We're also going to build the first ever global library of engaging children's books, of uh, content TV shows, uh, and other content that celebrates eye health, making a really fun interactive place resource 
for people to go and find their favorite character talking about glasses or eye health in a, a new and different way so uh, again messages tv programs don't always work in different countries so what we want is people to be able to upload things they've seen um so if i think of something that's on the bbc iplayer that my children see and i can upload that and other people in other parts of the world can do that as well um so we have a global library of engaging uh content um for the ultimate in imagination we've got we're going to be uh having a, a glasses of the future design competition um for children to do coloring in of our heart glasses or creating a new uh, a set of amazing fun stylish or cutting edge glasses we'll be producing resources for this competition uh, and again about education and about the importance of eye health uh, and lots of other fun interactive um tools word searches quizzes things like that so uh, lots planned uh, for the kind of uh, months and weeks leading up to world sight day all backed up by a huge number of resources packs for schools packs for parents packs for our members all of those kind of things and i know that that some of you have asked in the past because some of these things don't work in your locations um and so the child eye health work group are looking into this i know some of you are already speaking to them um but some things may not be perfect for you but what we hope is that they're adaptable uh, because what works in the united states may not work in argentina may not work in india it all is is different so it's really important for you to feel that you can adapt things to work in your areas and then finally we have our photo competition again returning for its ninth uh year and hopefully once again stronger than ever um the uh, I, the World Site Day photo competition is more than a competition. It's really a huge image library now showcasing the huge global breadth of eye health. And it's there for all of you to use on IAPB's Flickr um, page. We're going to have a new category, obviously uh, focused on breaking down stigma and celebrating the importance of eye health from a younger age. Uh, and to, to take engagement to the next level over the last few years, we've had a a judging panel and this year we're going to introduce a voters choice prize as well so that everyone can have their say on who the winners are um we have a roadmap for this element of the campaign um as well um and you understand for everything i've presented a lot of strategic thinking and discussion have gone on uh, we've got lots of exciting new elements uh designed to make this year's campaign even more impactful than recent years um, and you'll see these ideas transform into action over uh, the coming months. Uh, the team, the great team of people I get to to work each day with uh, will be working to deliver those polished resources and impactful media outreach uh, and memorable activations. Um, and we'll celebrate key milestones along the way, as we will, as I say, with the workplace work as well. Um, and speaking of commitments, uh, the Eagle I'd of you will realize that uh, we're here discussing this a month earlier than we did last year. Um, each year, uh, we try and make a commitment to bringing this information to you a month earlier because we know how important it is for you to be able to do your planning uh, when when it comes to World Sight Day and the campaigns that you run. So um, we hope uh, that within the next week, um, we will follow up with this uh the deck of this presentation this presentation we will follow up with video of this for those people who've missed and all of our resources will then be available on the iapb website so uh it's not quite there yet but it you will have it within the next uh week so either just before uh the easter break or certainly very early uh next week and if you those these two timelines i've shown you putting them on top of each other this, you don't need to take all of this in. That's those two slides on top of each other. What I'm trying to show here is the this idea of taking the campaign not just on one day, although that is the most important day. World Sight Day is the pinnacle of what we do, uh, but trying to grow it outside so that people can use it when they want to. And as I said at the beginning, this isn't about 
all of you doing all of this all the time you've all got important jobs and important things you're doing i'm not asking you to do that but what hopefully we're giving you is the opportunity of jumping on things that we are doing as iepb um points to engage policymakers and others to integrate your advocacy work into some of this um but also to provide you with opportunities that may work for your organization they may not and that's absolutely fine not a problem at all um but hopefully that's uh what we're doing to be able to reach new audiences and equip our members of over 200 organizations around the world to inspire positive change in eye health far and wide um so that's the impact we hope we can achieve together and that's the the spirit really of the 2030 insight strategy um last uh, piece for me before if there's any questions uh, you have you can either put them in the chat or um or ask them by raising your hand or or follow up on email um i do just want to remind people uh, of our global event in mexico taking place from the 25th to the 27th of uh, June uh, in Mexico City. Um, there's a QR code on the screen now. If you'd like to, to register, um, we'll be following up with the hotel links, which I think are, are ready and will be shared with you all in the coming uh, couple of days so you can book hotels. And it would be great to see as many of you as possible um, in Mexico. I know our Mexican uh, members, some of whom are on this call, are, are very excited to to welcome uh, the world, the IAPB world to uh, Mexico. Um, and it'd be great if you're able to come to to come to uh, Mexico. And, and please, if I realise finances are tight, but if you and colleagues are able to come, if you're able to encourage other people from your organisations to come, uh, the the more the the better. Um, so that is is a final shout from me um i'm just uh see, checking the and if there are any questions in uh in the comments i don't think there are there's lots of people saying uh welcome and saying lovely things so thank you uh very much for that if anyone has any questions please feel free to raise your hand um i'll be here for for a few moments after the meeting if you would like to ask a question otherwise please follow up uh on email but thank you uh, so much for your time today uh, and your commitment uh, and thank you for everything that you have done and that you will do to make world sight day and the love your eyes campaign a worldwide force for good so thank you very much and have a good rest of your day